So it's a massive Warhammer 40k release week. We've got Tower and Cruise, though a fair bit more besides. Let's talk new combat patrols, all the crew prices, and a little bit more for Space Marines, Orcs, and Imperial Artillery. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about the Warhammer 40k releases, Games Workshop having one week off to go to Sigma and the Old World, and now it's back in Warhammer 40k again, basically with another really big release that we knew was coming, the Tau and Crudes that were revealed at the start of the year, now here in full form. As per normal, Games Workshop have announced them in their Sunday reveal show, pre-orders will be coming this Saturday the 27th of April, so that means the full release will be the 11th of May, orders shipping out at around about that time. So still unfortunately a little bit of a way to wait until you get your hands on any of the new crew miniatures that haven't come out in the hunting pack box set. As mentioned there's really quite a lot of stuff coming out. There's the new Tau Empire Combat Patrol box set, the new Codex Tau which should mean that points are out in the not too distant future. All those new crew releases which I must admit are looking extraordinarily expensive if you want an army built around them and these sculpts. Might be giving it ad make a run for their money in points per dollar. There's some Sentinels and the Medusa and the Basilisk for the Solar Auxilia, some made to order orcs, including a cool killer can and some old knob sculpts, and some Space Marine heroes of Strike Force Justinian coming out in Target in the USA. As ever with these Warhammer 40k releases, if you were looking to pick them up and pre order them, I personally don't really aim to go through discount retailers as opposed to Games Workshop Direct. You can save around about 15% depending on where you are in the world. The ones that are linked down in the video description should be having these go live at the weekend. Unfortunately it looks like the Town Crew release have been delayed in Australia and New Zealand, so it might be a little bit longer to wait for them. 15% off at Element Games in the UK, 10% off at Fenris Workshop in Canada, and 15% at Wargame Portal in the USA. These should be the times that they normally go live on pre-order. Fingers crossed there shouldn't be as big a rush on these compared with the Battle Force box sets that Games Workshop likes to underproduce and sell out in minutes. Though certain third party stores might still sell out of individual items, they only get allocated a certain amount before they go on general sale. In any case, a massive thank you to any of you guys who were choosing to pick stuff up, who choose to buy them through those links, it does help support the channel and keep all these videos coming. Let's jump in with the new Tower Combat Patrol box though. This one will be priced like the rest at £95, €125 Euros, or $160. And as matching up with the Codex, it contains a Devilfish, a Tower Commander that you can build the Enforcer or the Cold Star variant from, a squad of Pathfinders, and a squad of regular Fire Warriors that you can use as Breachers or as Strike Teams. It looks like the Pathfinders probably won't get the Kill Team upgrade sprue. Typically, they don't tend to add those in outside of the actual Kill Team box sets. Overall, I feel like the unit balance is kind of handy enough. The Fire Warriors could work really quite well as Breachers and go in the Devilfish. Pathfinders are handy enough to have, they can pack a punch with those special weapons, and Tower Commander's a fairly central model to the force, a linchpin of quite a lot of combos with the Crisis suits. Looks like points wise it is kind of on the low side really, around about 355 points as per the points prior to any digital updates, and it looks like it's around about a 30% discount compared with buying the kit separately, a little bit lower than the discount on the last Tower Combat Patrol set, but still enough to be useful. And it seems that around about the 30% discount mark is what Games Workshop's going for with the Combat Patrols of 10th edition. Overall, it feels like internet reaction to this one hasn't been too bad. There's some fairly core cool units for the faction, and you do at least get a fair amount of models and two bigger, more valuable ones. It's not the most in terms of getting points on the board, though that's perhaps more due to Tower being kind of expensive to collect right now. It maybe does upsell you on some crisis suits to go with that commander after you've bought this, though I feel like if you're collecting Tau, you probably have at least some of those, or might want some of those, just as part of standard collecting. The Combat Patrol will replace the one with the Ghost Kill that you can see here. That one had the Ghost Kill, Fireblade and Ethereal, 10 Fire Warriors and Stealth Suits. That's broadly going to be out of production and no longer on sale around the world now. There might just be some still available for discount retailers that have quite a lot of stock. I noticed that Element Games linked down in the video description is still selling these for £81. At least on the raw numbers front, the new one doesn't look quite as good a deal compared with this one. It's around about 10% less, both in terms of the kits included price and the points in the box. Though of course it would depend on the exact units that you wanted in the army. Let me know what you reckon. Do you prefer the new Combat Patrol or the old one? Look forward to hearing from you Tau players out there. Otherwise, for their alien carnivorous mercenaries, we've got the standard crew carnivores. Looks like these guys are going for the same price as, say, the accursed cultists from Chaos Space Marines. £32.50, $55, or €42.50. 
Honestly, a bit higher than I might have hoped for for the Crute. They have had other hoary type troops at more like £30 or $50, things like Tyranid Termagants or Chaos Cultists. I'd say the miniatures are nice enough re sculpts, slightly sharper details, there's a bit of war gear added with that Tangle Bomb launcher. And it does look like they're going to be quite a competitive unit for Codex Tower Empire unless they go up massively in cost. Objective Control 2, Scouting and that Sticky Objectives type rule are all quite nice things. And they're certainly going to be a central unit to that Hunting Pack formation. They do look pretty awful in terms of points per money though. If they remain at 55 points per squad then you're looking at 1 point per dollar there, which is pretty dreadful by 40k standards. Crew will look like a very expensive army to collect. I suppose at least some of you out there will probably already have a good amount of these from the hunting pack box set. Otherwise, we've got five crude hounds. These guys are £25, $40 or €32.50. Euros the same price as the Fenrisian wolves for the space wolves, it would seem. Again, looking to be around about the one point per dollar mark. Not exactly great news for value. Again, pretty fun sculpts, but also really quite expensive ones. $8 for a single model here is quite a price tag. As it goes, they're quite a nice screening unit though. They can move forward really quite fast and potentially do nuisance charges at long range. Not really doing too much damage, but fairly quick and helpful to have for screening. We've got the proper town melee unit in the Crutox Rampages. $37.50, $60 or €50. Euros. These ones maybe weren't too hard to predict the price of. They're the same price as standard bike squads with three models or the Necron Scorpet destroyers and things. It's pretty well where I expected them for these. It is fun that Tau actually have a genuine close combat unit that's somewhat general purpose and capable, even if they are hampered a bit by lower AP. They're listed at 130 points in print in the Codex. Unless Games Workshop chooses to change that, that's where they'll stay. Maybe seem like they're going to be a bit niche at that price tag. Though at least compared with the rest of the crew, this is probably the most points that you can get on the table for the money. So there is that, I suppose. The standard Crutox rider looks like he's £27.50, $45 or €35. Euros. If he remains at 40 points, then he's a model that could break that one point per dollar threshold and be one of the single worst value kits in 40k for getting points on the board. I did feel like he'd be setting records for that, given it that he's packaged as a one model kit and the model's quite so cheap to field in game. They did beef up his stats a little bit for the new model, but maybe not quite as much as I might have expected. As with a fair few of the crew, he feels like he's going to have more value as a sort of nuisance skirmishy type unit as opposed to your main damage punch. Not too bad to have a cheapish, toughish placeholder unit to sit in the backfield a bit, chipping away with a bit of damage. Maybe threatening to do secondary actions, and he can do a small amount of counter charging if needed. He does have the two options between the Tangle Cannon and Repeater Cannon. Unfortunately, I think that they're just kind of badly balanced, really. Extra dedicated shooting to kill light infantry is the last thing that Crew needs, so likely the Repeater Cannon with a bit of AP and damage is going to be the way to go. The Lone Spear is a model that didn't come out in the Hunting Pack box set, so the first time that you can get your hands on him. He's quite a cool sculpt, I think, riding his chameleonic creature into battle. £32.50, $55 or €42.50, again a fairly predictable price for this one. Looking like he's the same cost as the Space Marine Chaplain on bike. For him you get the option of the head swaps you can see here, plus the choice between the long rifle versus the explosive spear loadout, depending on whether or not you actually want to do a bit of genuinely threatening damage, or have the longer range to be able to mark enemy units for his debuff a bit more easily. His cost as printed is 110 points, which I think is a little bit spendy for general purposes. He can move very quickly across the board, and fast-moving lone operatives are nice to have, admittedly. As with everything else, Crute is likely to be far more interesting in the hunting pack than elsewhere. That Crute Hawk flock in particular could be kind of nice to deny reserves, on a unit that can't be shot from greater than 12 inches away, can make for a very safe objective. Finally, for the actual Crute miniatures, we've got the Flesh Shaper, War Shaper and Trail Shaper, they're all sold individually at Games Workshop, sort of cheaper support character kind of price tag, looking like £22.50, $35 or €30. Euros. This would put them at the same price as a Guard Commissar. Fun to have a few more sculpts for Shaper type models now. The Trail Shaper is kind of fun for redeploys, particularly with the Fast Stalker Kimbans. Probably the other two are going to be a lot more useful in the hunting pack compared with elsewhere. For the War Shaper, I'd be tempted to go with the Dart Bow loadout. The devastating wounds enhancement he can take can make that quite a menace against infantry. I feel like these guys are perhaps at the sort of level where you could kit bash them if you wanted, trying to make them out of fast stalkers and regular crew bits. Definitely options here if you wanted to try and economise a bit. For the rules for all of them, we now have the general sale of Codex Tau Empire. It has already been in general circulation from that crew hunting pack box set, and this one will be the usual £35, $60 or €45. Euros. 
This one's got the new cover art that's kind of similar to the Night Edition Codex cover, but with the background changed up a bit, kind of similar to a few of the other codexes so far. And I've also got a limited edition one with another previous codex cover on. If you did prefer that to the main launch one or the one that came in the hunting pack box set, featuring its different flavour of previous codex art, the limited edition one is something like 150% the normal price of the codex if you want the fancy cover. In general, the contents of the Tower Codex are really quite well known at this point. They lost some data sheets, including the named ethereals. The Crisis suits got split into a few different units, such as the Sunforge, the Star Scythe, and the Fire Knife ones, all with their own specialisations and special rules. They gained a whole ton of crew data sheets. I've got four detachments, with Montcar and Kalyon being joined by the Retaliation card for Battle Suits and the Crude Hunting Pack. Fortunately for the new codex, it should mean that we get some digital points within the next three weeks. It'd be nice to finally have the tower rules kind of officially go live with the points cost for the new units. I'd guess that the majority of new stuff might stay at least somewhat close to how it was printed, though I suspect that the majority of the rest of the codex might well stay similar to the digital points that came before it. That seems to be the normal trend with these downloads so far. Finally for the big tower release, we've got the datasheet cards and the faction dice. Looks like the faction dice sort of clear frosted whitish, which is kind of interesting. Not sure if they'd be the easiest dice to read on the tabletop, but look cool enough, I guess. The datasheet cards have 44 datasheets on them. I believe that's the ones in the codex, plus the drones, plus the combat patrol data cards. If you do want some handy flash cards with the stat lines for use in game, it looks like they'll be the, the normal kind of prices for those. £20 or $35 for the data cards, £18 or $32 for the dice. Both priced at a bit of a luxury, really, but kind of fun things to have if Tau's your main thing. Overall, for the most part, prices where I was expecting them for the Tau. Maybe the Crew Carnivores, I was hoping they might have been a little bit cheaper than that. Perhaps the same with the Crew Tox Rider as well. I think basically everyone was expecting, though, that if you want an army of any given size that's mainly made up of these new Crew Sculpts, it is going to cost really quite a lot. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on the other stuff, though. What do you make of the new Combat Patrol? That's not it for 40k releases though, we've got the Solar Auxilia Basilisk or Medusa, this one's £40, $65 or €55. Euros. Looks like this one's been priced at the same amount as their Lehman Ross variants and things. I feel like this one could be another one that might be interesting enough for guard collectors in the 40k setting. It is basically a Basilisk that's mounted on a Lehman Ross sort of chassis with some different styling and enclosed crew compartments. Could be nice for industrial themed regiments, maybe could fit in nicely enough alongside Steel Legion perhaps. It's got the option to mount a Medusa cannon instead. Feels like that wouldn't be too unacceptable to use as a manticore perhaps. The guns do have a kind of similar profile in 10th edition 40k. Obviously these ones are more aimed at the heresy setting though. Looks like this one will be priced slightly more than the Basilisk, though it does mean that you might potentially be able to get it a little bit cheaper than the regular 40k Basilisk if price was a consideration, as you'd be able to buy this through online discount retailers like the ones in the video description, where the regular guard basilisk is online only, so normally it is no discounts and just from the web store from most sellers. Otherwise, for the Solar Auxilio, we've got these Hermes Light Sentinels, £40, $65 or €55. Euros. Again, the same sort of price as the Solar Auxilio Ross, but you get two of these. These ones maybe feel a bit more like the classic guard sentinel, the one that just had its miniature replaced by the newer one. I feel like they do the job of Light Scout Walker at least fairly well. I think the models are cool enough for little support walkers. Lastly, there's two more things. Looks like there's a few orcs going up for made-to-order release. We've got the classic metal orc Dreadnought, five metal knobs for the orc elite, and six blood axe commandos. Most of these having gone out of production really quite a long time ago at this point. Could be interesting enough for any orcs players looking for a few retro green skins, I suppose. They definitely do have their charm. I must admit, though, I wasn't too sorry when Games Workshop phased out these bigger metal vehicles for newer, shinier plastics. Finally, for a US-only release, there's the Space Marine Heroes coming to Target stores, apparently. These ones are the Strike Force Justinian Space Marine Heroes, usually bought as these blind box type things, so you don't know which miniature that you're getting until you've opened it. I believe there's usually a way that if you get an entire set of the box sets, then you should be guaranteed the majority of the figures all in one go, plus maybe a duplicate. And these ones do have their own kill team rules in Strike Force Justinian. Somewhat straightforward entry level rules if you do want to get a very small game of Warhammer going all at once. I feel like these guys are nice enough models. Space Marines definitely have more than enough individual sculpts for all sorts of minis out there. There are some pretty exciting ones though. A Space Marine Captain is generally pretty good value. 
It would be very nice to get out of one of these blind boxes, given how much Games Workshop tends to charge for them bought individually. And quite nice to have some things from other squads. There's a few fun ones in there, like an Illuminator and a Heavy Intercessor, to make a bit of a mixed unit. In any case though, seems to be another pretty busy week for the 41st Millennium. Let me know what you make of the troop prices. Would any of you guard players be tempted to pick up a solar auxiliar basilisk? What do you make of the tower combat patrol? And would anyone be tempted by made-to-order metal orcs? Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments below. As mentioned, if you were picking up any of these, feel free to check out the links in the video description. It should be going live at the weekend, though as mentioned the crews are delayed in Australia. Can be one way to save a bit of money versus Games Workshop, and also support the channel if you'd like to. In any case, a big thank you for listening. I'll certainly be looking forward to reporting on any tower points if and when we get them. It will be interesting to finally see what the new codex has to offer in terms of unit power. I might also try and do a follow-up video to this one sometime later in the week, doing a few polls as I did with the Orcs and Custodies release, maybe with a few polls and things to highlight which of the models are more popular or unpopular, and what people are thinking of the release in general. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see any of that. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Orspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.